It's your boy, T.S. And Jamie, and welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicles of Bloodstock 2022. I'm Chris, I'm the singer in Inhuman Nature. So, uh, first and foremost, how was your pandemic season? How was that the last few years? Oh, wow. Um, it, it wasn't too bad, to be honest. I think I, caught, I ended up getting COVID at the tail end of it anyway. Uh, but like me and my girlfriend, we lived together, so we had each other to like hang out with and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, I would say it was like hard not being able to play shows. Like if I get deep about it, it was I, there was a point where I was like, oh fucking hell, like is that it now? Am I just yeah, going to yeah. work from home every day and like not get to do all the shit I actually like to do. I like my job or whatever, but like, you know, like playing music is what I've done since I was a teenager. And there was a point where I was like, oh fuck, like, yeah. is, is this is this life now? But obviously, you know, we're at Bloodstock and it's obviously all right. So yeah, but yeah, overall it was, I'd say I was like 70% fine. <laughs> 30% like not good, but it was all right. As long as, as, long as it's 70% in the positive. Yeah, a lot, watched a lot of movies, Watched read, read some books, shit like that. It was all right. Yeah, had each other to hang out with, so it was cool. It was great, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, how are you finding Bloodstock so far? It's a very, very hot one this year. Yeah, I wore black jeans, black boots, <laughs> and I wore a denim cut off on stage because I took off halfway through, which was a mistake. But you do have to suffer for heavy metal. I'm so sorry, it's okay. sorry for Gwar later. They have my yeah. all my sympathies. <laughs> They are going to melt. I was trying to explain Gwar to someone in the coffee shop um, yesterday when before I came, and they were just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, <laughs> and so they, they were like, "Aren't you going to be hot?" I was like, "Mate, like, go and look up Gwar, and you feel bad." <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't as bad as that. But yeah, I am looking forward to seeing Gwar. It's one of the bands I'm, I want to see. So Decent. I'm into that. Yeah, but yeah, blood, it's the first time I've ever been to Bloodstock actually. Oh, really? Our drummer like comes every year. Daro, who played bass for us, he's been before. But yeah, first, literally my first day ever here is now. It's really That's cool. Amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. So you get to play on the first day and enjoy the rest of the festival? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Merciful Fate tomorrow. That's like going to be my highlight. Yeah. That's what I'm really looking forward to, yeah. Just hanging out. It's our, also our guitarist's birthday. It's our guitarist's birthday today, which he begged us not to mention on stage. <laughs> and and, and some, like, I don't know who did it. It got introduced. And then it's Dara, who's playing bass for us. His birthday tomorrow. So I think it will be... Party Central, Absolutely. which would be cool. Boys. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, how how did the set go? How did your set went? Yeah, really Happy. good. Yeah, yeah like um, we just we, you know we plowed through like seven songs as quick as we could just to fit it into half hour. Um, yeah, really fun, man. The crowd was great, like super fun. Everyone like there was like a circle pit going pretty much the whole time, um, which is good if you're a thrash band. So, you know, <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool. Like just kind of looking out, and like it is, it was, it felt like so packed. But it's fun, which is which is really nice considering we're like we're not like a, a super well-known band or anything like that, and we're on really early. So it's really yeah. nice. Saw a few people wearing our shirts. Like and there was also people I like, recognised from shows nice. and stuff like that. So yeah, really nice, man. Yeah, That's good start to the day. It's awesome. awesome. Did you have enough weaponry sharpened ready for the show? Well. <laughs> Normally our actual bassist you unfortunately couldn't make it. He's the guy that has all the weapons oh, um, wow. So we didn't bring I was uh, the plan was for me to walk on with a massive broadsword <laughs> Kind of like a, like a fucking ego dickhead like <laughs> everyone else is on and I was gonna walk on with a sword But yeah, he's, he's got the arsenal at home, so I couldn't get it So it sharpened it just wasn't there. Yeah, exactly. It was ready to go, but not here unfortunately, but well you but do Obviously today you're here playing the Sophie Lancaster stage. Yeah. What do you know of Sophie Lancaster and that whole story? Um, I mean, obviously, I know obviously what happened with with her and her, her boyfriend. Obviously, got attacked while they were out in a park, and you know, Sophie tried to protect her her boyfriend who's always been attacked, and in the end, obviously, you know, she, she died from it. Um, which is, it's just fucking awful, you know. Like, that's, I guess that is what I know about. I know the I know some of the guys involved went to prison, and I think they're out now. Stuff like that, um, but yeah, I guess that is what I know about it, really. Yeah, and obviously, you know, it's great that they named the stage after it oh, yeah. as well. That's what I love about it. You know, you've got that stage there. We're talking to, trying to talk to many bands who can play. Yeah. Stage. At the end of the day, you guys are flying the flag for Sophia. Why are you there? You're there bringing yeah. people to that name. People come into that tent, see that name. They go, yeah, yeah. Is this about 
having a look. And it's in this incredible charity that here. I don't know if you get a chance to go talk to them. Oh, right, okay. Sophie's brother's here. Nice, and okay, cool. Fun. And it's an incredible charity that's raising awareness of people who are bullied and treated differently yeah. because they're from this subculture. So yeah, yeah. I think it's amazing to be here. It's a great I'm, message. I was thinking about this because obviously I knew we were going to talk about it. and you know like someone might argue with me against this but like i bet if you if you looked at like sophie and her boyfriend and the people that that did the attack i bet their backgrounds aren't even like that dissimilar do you know what i mean they're from the same town no they're like not they're not alternative and sophie was and that was what caused the attack but like it just makes me think about the way you, you treat other people and just because you look different like you know what, what why does that fucking matter you know what i mean but like you know what they're probably from they're from the same fucking town. They're probably the same. I don't know if you want to say you're working class or middle class or whatever. It's, they're probably very similar, but just because one person is different, and we really have that like divide in this country. You know, what I mean, we have left and right. You're like, oh, you're liberal, you're not that sort of thing. When I was a kid, you had like chavs and grungers, which is obviously like kind of relates to this, this sort of shit. And it's like, yeah, we're all just fucking people exactly. people yeah life is shit enough without trying to fucking hate <laughs> yeah. someone who just looks a bit different from you you like a different type of music it's bullshit man you know? it is, it's ridiculous. and it's like where does that come from and i don't think it really stems from the 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 people who act in that way i think it does come from like above you know yeah it's crazy absolutely you know that like i know everyone keeps taking the piss out this whole stranger things phenomenon at the minute with, with eddie yeah. Watson, but that kind of proves the point of what we're saying is that's set in the 80s and yeah. he was treated differently in an outcast because he was alternative and yeah, yeah. shows how long this shit's been going on and yeah exactly yeah yeah absolutely yeah. you know but if people you get out of that mindset of like oh you know they're different from me like just talk to people it's finally you're very similar man you're just like fucking people trying to live and go to your jobs whatever like and then you go out and do stuff that you like and everyone does that shit but there's no need to fucking fight over it i mean it's been happening you know like yeah it happened in the 80s the mods and rockers were at it all the time and i know like you know human beings are naturally like tribalistic and stuff like that but i don't know man i don't see a dude in a tracksuit and think i'm gonna fucking fuck that guy <laughs> up like sometimes i worry they would look at me and be like oh i'm gonna fucking mess with this dude but like luckily i'm like over six feet tall and it's i don't get messed with a lot but you know it's like i don't get it man i don't get that sort of stuff but you know maybe maybe like something like stranger things where people might watch that that's a pretty universal show people might watch it and be like oh okay like i'm hoping I'm yeah. Really hoping. yeah chris it's been amazing thank you so much for doing this no you're welcome man that's Absolutely cool appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. yeah yeah you too thank okay, you nice one guys cheers